Let's take a look at how to color line art using Photoshop CC. I have my PSD file open here, and I'll go ahead and select the brush tool. Next, I'll click up in the top left to select a brush preset, and I'll choose the hard edge brush. And I'll just do a little test stroke to make sure my brush is working. If I want to choose a color, I can pick that over here on the right from the color picker. There's the hue strip, and then there's the value and saturation in the rectangle you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this light blue color. You can resize your brush really quickly using the left and right bracket keys. I can make my brush bigger, or I can make it smaller. If you're using a drawing tablet, you should also be able to vary the size of your brush using pen pressure. Pressing down harder will give you a thicker line, pressing down lighter will give you a thinner line. If that's not working, you'll need to click on the pen pressure icon up here at the top. Now let's start coloring our artwork. Let's select the color layer, and then if we paint on that color layer, since the lines are on a separate layer above it, we can paint behind the line art without having to worry about coloring over it. I like to paint along the edges first and then fill in the middle with a bigger brush. If you want, you can go ahead and name your layers. I'm going to name this blue, and I'm going to create an additional layer by clicking on the new layer icon, and I'm going to call this yellow. I'll move yellow down underneath the blue layer, and I'll select a yellow color, and then I'll go ahead and paint, and just like how I can paint behind my line art, I can paint the yellow paint behind the blue paint without covering it up. I'm going to add a third color layer, and I'm going to make this pink. You can add as many layers of color as you like, or you can just put all your colors on the same layer. The advantage to separating out your colors is it makes it really easy to change each individual color. For example, I could select the blue layer, and I could go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and if I move the Hue slider, I can easily change just that blue color to a different color without affecting the other colors in the composition. Now let's take a look at how to get some marker type effects with our digital painting application. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it multiply. And then I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. Then I'm going to paint with a red color here and fill in this small area. If I change the blend mode back to normal, you can see that it's covering up the line art. If I change it back to multiply, then it's not covering it up. To further illustrate how this is working, I'm going to create a second multiply layer. I'm going to choose blue and I'm going to set that to multiply as well. Now if I overlap those two colors, you can see it's creating a marker blending effect. You can also fill in these shapes using the paint bucket tool. I'm going to right click to duplicate my lines and I'm going to name it bucket and then move it below the lines layer. Then I'm going to select the paint bucket tool, which may be hiding under the gradient. And then I can simply hold alt to sample a current color. And then I can go ahead and click within each of these cells to fill them in. Using the paint bucket might be easier if you don't have a drawing tablet or if you have a lot to fill in. You can also change the color of the black lines. You can right click on the lines layer and then duplicate it. And then on the topmost duplicate, you can name that color hold and you can select an effect for color overlay. Then you can pick any color that you want here for your lines. You can also change the color of the background. You'll want to click on the background layer. And then right above that layer, you can add an adjustment layer for solid color. I'll just fill it with a solid color and you can pick whichever color you like to fill in your background. Next, let's take a look at how to add gradients. Let's select this yellow layer, and then what I want to do is hold control and then click on the layer, and that'll make a selection around what's on that layer, which is just that yellow triangle. Next, I'll select the gradient tool, which may be hiding under the paint bucket, and I'll select an orange color, make sure I'm on linear gradient, and then just drag straight down to draw a gradient. That gives me a little bit of interesting shading there in my shape. I can also go to that blue layer, and I can do the same thing where I hold control to make a selection, pick a slightly different color, and then drag down my gradient. And there's lots of options for the gradient. You can choose the shape of the gradient, or you can choose the colors within the gradient. There's some presets here. If you click on the little triangle, for example, I can choose foreground color to transparency. That's what I'm using now. But I can also click on the swatch itself, and I can change it by adding different transparency and color stops. These are the different elements of the gradient. So if you want more than one color, you'd add those here. Click in the gray area above the gradient strip to add a color or a swatch, and then click in the bottom left to change the color. Let's go ahead and test that gradient. Here's how it looks with the linear gradient. We can also change it to radial if you want a more radial or circular pattern. If you want to deselect that selection when you're done, go to select and choose deselect or hit control D on your keyboard. If you need to erase anything, you can use the eraser. It's important to not save over your original, so make sure that when you save, you go to Save As, and you can go ahead and just call this whatever you want. You could call it Page 4 and then add your name or whatever you like. 
The format that you'll want to choose will be PNG, which is good for the web or general purpose, or you could choose TIFF if you want a high quality print, or if you want something that's a very small file size to share on the web, you can choose JPEG. So there you go, that's a quick tutorial on how to color line art using Photoshop. If you're interested in coloring this mandala, you can download it along with 19 other mandalas. It's available as an adult coloring book on gumroad.com slash Aaron Rutten. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.